Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And unrest is definitely gearing up far greater in eastern Ukraine there. Both sides, both Russian-backed forces inside of Donetsk, Luhansk have been shelling uh, the Ukrainian positions there as well as uh, Ukrainian forces backed by NATO forces have been shelling uh, back across the line against Donetsk and Luhansk regions there. Now the footage you're seeing is a file photo or file video rather that we're sharing here with you on this here but uh, according to several different news outlets there the fighting has increased to a level since, not seen since February of 2017. Uh, I want to share with you here what the State Department is saying on this issue right now just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here to begin with. Uh, let me just quickly uh, bring that up to your attention here. Let's listen in. Violence in Eastern Ukraine. Last night, Russian-led forces shelled the town of Novohonsk with Brad rockets wounding eight I'm not the only one that has a hard time saying these names. School and also a playground. Fighting also resumed today around the Donetsk filtration station and its system of pipes carrying poisonous chlorine gas. <clears throat> now it's kind of interesting that the U.S. State Department is now uh, making this statement here. And of course, as we can see here, according to this satellite photo, uh, it is alleging that Russian-led forces are as close as 500 meters from the Donetsk water filtration plant. Uh, they need a ceasefire withdrawal of heavy weapons as soon as possible per the Minsk agreement. And I just find that kind of ironic because no one on the Ukrainian under Petro Poroshenko uh, being backed by by U.S. and other NATO allies have honored anything when it comes to the Minsk agreement. We have reported on this extensively as the years have gone by, even showing how that uh, weapons have been supplied, heavy weapons have been supplied, tanks and everything. They have continually to uh, f attack against eastern Ukraine citizens, finally to the point to where this group has become a separatist part of the region and Russia has acknowledged them as a separatist nation even giving them Russian rubles as their currency now. Uh, but it is a very, very difficult situation in this part of the world. And of course, not only, uh, and again, I don't know who started this part of the conflict as of now. I know the West is saying that it was Russian-backed uh, forces there, even Russian forces directly involved in this. Uh, and as well, we know the grad launch rockets were used as well against the... Uh, uh, the Donetsk region here, as we can see in this video footage here that I'll play for you here, that they're showing their video footage there of grad rockets coming in. Uh, some 40 rockets have fell inside of Donetsk there. Uh, the grad rockets there, pretty heavy size artillery that's being used. And of course, in the Donetsk Luhansk region, it is always the civilian populations that are that are really catching the brunt of what's happening there. So again, <clears throat> makes me kind of wonder, uh, I know we talked about Russian forces pulling out of Syria because of uh, the possibility that the Arab nations may come against Israel and Russia just trying to get out of the way. But as I see <clears throat> the information that's happening here and the build up there, it kind of makes me wonder if it's not possibly Russia getting ready to, to defend their own frontier, uh, especially with the, with the rise of the latest tensions there. Speaking of that, and then another reason why I kind of go to this, this is a little bit older here, but this video here put up by Michael, Michael D. <clears throat> on his Twitter page there showing yet another huge convoy uh, of military equipment uh, arriving at uh, 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 Latvia. And uh, again, the military buildup on Russia's border is unprecedented uh, of any other time in the history uh, since the Cold War there. So it's very troubling to see this. Croatian Armed Forces members of their military hardware has arrived at, excuse me, Lithuania, not Latvia, but, uh, Latvia, but Lithuania, to join the NATO uh, battle group led by German and the Baltic forces there. So very disturbing information we continue to see. And I kind of bring this out because... Uh, some articles here that I've been looking at too. North Korea, the scapegoat, China, the real target of U.S. Navy buildup in the Pacific. Again, we have to remember the scriptural 
look at this where it speaks about uh, tidings out of the east, now the north trouble him. That's the king of the north that is troubled by these tidings, and that's China and Russia that are the troubling uh, point here for uh, NATO's uh, king that they're using. And we see this, like in this case here, the Chinese military experts believe the U.S. is using North Korea as a cover to deploy more ships to curb Beijing's military aspirations. And there may be some founded grounding for this because if you look at like the article here on RT, many people are carrying this article already, Pakistan considers dumping dollar for the uh, yuan in trade with China. Now, of course, Pakistan is not that big of a nation, but there's a lot of other nations already uh, dumping the dollar for the Chinese yuan in, as a trading currency. And even though President Trump has touted that the U.S. economy is on the upswing with a 3% increase, uh, we have noticed ourselves in Europe, we've not seen a single bit of increase in value in the U.S. dollar. In fact, the U.S. dollar is down uh, by about 20% in value of that of about four years ago. Now, that's just what we see when we go to the ATM machine uh, you know, to, to do a withdrawal. It's about a 20% difference in the Czech Republic. And that pretty much carries across even with the, uh, the euro. So it's very, very shaky indeed, very troubling. We'll also have this article here on the globalsearch.ca. Uh, Trump calls China a rival power. And of course, that's infuriated China uh, to get that type of information set, up, set against it. But said it's called China a revisionist country, a rival state, a strategic competitor, and potentially jeopardizing bilateral relations the way they should be. Uh, President Trump is very aggressive when it comes to the trade relations, and I can understand because China has had an upper hand. But at the same time, with the threat of the dollar being, the petrodollar being exchanged for the Chinese yuan, I can certainly see where things are declining very rapidly and not in a way that is very favorable uh, for the U.S., especially the possibility of war. And that's about the only way they'll be able to prop up the, the dollar. Then we have this other article that comes out as well, very troubling indeed on uh, New Eastern Outlook, Brace for Impact, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the U.S. are about to invade Syria. Now it's not the, the direct invasion, but it looks like according to the article here that the U.S. is once again training proxies including ISIS militants, other uh, different groups there. They're talking about the different bases that have been set up inside of Syria and that uh, Russia has been warning that this buildup of new, uh, new rebel forces are getting ready to take, try to take down Bashar al-Assad once again. This time claiming in the article though that, the, that Israel as well will go in after Lebanon, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and even through uh, from Jordanian's uh, southern side of the border there, Israel will actually invade in there, trying to break uh, the, the uh, Syrian military uh, that has built a greater stronghold. In fact, they're saying that Israel will target Hezbollah and Iranian forces inside of Syria while the uh, Free Syrian Army and ISIS militants that the U.S. they claim are tra training there inside of Jordan and other bases east of the Jordan River will actually go against the uh, Assad forces there. So Syria is definitely still on the plate. Russia has backed out and of course the article claims that through the vacuum of Russia pulling their own troops out, this is what's going to give the U.S., Saudi Arabia, and Israel the uh, ability to take uh, to to pull in through that vacuum and once again launch a campaign against them. Syria's President Bashar al-Assad accuses France of sponsoring terrorism. <clears throat> in fact, President Assad is saying that France has no place uh, speaking about peace or a negotiating table to discuss peace uh, uh, regarding Syria because of their hands being soaked with Syrian blood. Uh, I'm sure that that would probably also fall on the hands of uh, many other nations that are presently trying to, uh, as they claim, fight ISIS in the region. Uh, so we'll just have to see how that goes. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, tomorrow we should have some of these other uh, videos up that we've been talking to you about, sharing with you. But it'll be on Danoon Institute, so be sure to check out our channel, Danoon Institute. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.